as we sit at the light at the corner of Williamson and International Speedway. You notice this rooms to go over here, but right behind there is our final destination. Just past the Cracker Barrel, on to Turn One Drive. We're approaching Daytona International Speedway. Welcome car. to Don't Daytona to Beach. Shut up, GPS. So we're back at Daytona International Speedway today for a fan preview event, an open house, if you will, for 2020. I figured we'd come out, check out everything that's going on. There's a little race that's going on inside as well. I we talk to you a little bit about Metallica. Welcome to Rockville will be here in May. We also have a couple races before then. Daytona 500, of course, and the Rolex 24. Take a look around the track. Before any of the race stuff happens next year, a concert, you can see they have some Christmas decorations out here with the candy canes. They have a drive through light show that happens annually. We did that a couple years ago. You can check out the video up here. Very cool thing. You drive all the way through and around the track and in the inside. This line out here as we wait is actually the start finish line that carries over through the seating down onto the track inside. This is parallel. One long start finish line, and this is the crowd that's out here for the open house. And we're going in. Before you go inside, they have trophies here Daytona Supercross trophy to take a picture with, or the Harley J. Earl Daytona 500 trophy. I think we probably have a hundred pictures with this trophy already, but what's one more? We've got our picture. And we're going up. Daytona! And we're walking in. Start finish line continuing up here. We're going all the way across. Look at all of these rims. We're going up, up, up. We're over by Fox Sports now. We're heading up. Heading up yet another level with Rolex 24 Lounge Trioval Club. 400 level. Mary loves escalators and looking down. Nope. For those that don't come to racing though, you may want to understand that the higher up you go are generally the best seats in the house that you can see across the track in the back as well. Here we are looking down. 400 level. Over in the distance there is the one Daytona. It's about two years old. Excellent places to eat and drink before your races or any activities over here. All right, our first stop is gonna be going through the Rolex 24 Club. We've made our way in. They're gonna give us some raffle tickets. All right, we're going in the club here. Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty on the TV. Bar is open. We got free snacks over here, hot dogs. We're going on a venue tour, but we're slightly behind everybody. You see all these box seats up here. Anheuser Busch, Goodyear. We're going on a tour. So we're behind a Loge box. You can rent that out. Eight to twelve people. Waiter service. There's a race going on today, but it's over towards the road course track inside. Similar to Rolex, You've got basically like Corvettes, and those type of cars racing today. If you guys are watching this because you're interested in Welcome to Rockville, we see the infield area over that. Way. I believe that's where a chunk of the concert will take place, and then you have area here where I imagine they'll have staging as well. I'm not sure if they'll use the seats or not for the show. I wouldn't expect them to. But as you can see, unless you're in like the Gatorade fan area over here, there's not a whole lot of shade out there. It's all just grass and open air. I may have misspoke about the branding for the fan area, by the way. It's the UNOH fan area. Right over here is Winter Circle. So after every race, that's where trophies are presented, champagne flows, or soft drinks, and all that good stuff. But as you can see, if you're coming here for the races, 
higher seats are better because you get a good view of everything that's going around the track. And you can actually see everything on the back stretch. The lower you go, you're blinded to anything that's happening on the back stretch and relying on the big video screens, which are not in place here today. I don't know if they're refurbing the video screens or if they were down because of the hurricanes. And up on the roof area over here, that is where the spotters will be for the teams that are racing as well. We're going down the escalator and we're in Toyota land. Look at that. There. Bad ass. Here are actual pictures when the space shuttle was being towed on the Toyota Tundra. We've got some show cars hanging from the ceiling here as well. Even Kyle Busch. He has a big picture of Matt DiBenedetto. Nice guy. More Toyota racing monster trucks, bikes. Now we're down to the 200 level. A lot of times there's group tickets that you can buy for these suites. Like I've been to these suites before for the monster. I've been to these suites before for like Monsters Radio 104.1 in Orlando. You know, they'll rent out a place and have some food in there. Or sometimes you can buy packages from Daytona International if you come to the races that include driver meet and greets or Q and A's, and they'll rent out suites or use one of these areas. We're gonna make a stop through Harley J's. Look at that. I've actually not been in here before. Well, I mean, Get some beverages, video games, some snacks over here as well. Holy geez, is there a sports bar that you can come in during a race or they have packages? Check out these recliners. You could chill in here, watch the race in these recliners like you're at home while you're at the track. It's stone cold. As we're walking behind the seats, I don't know if you can see the different color seats, but they are a different color on purpose so that when you're on TV, they look like they're full, even if they're not full. Now we've made our way down to the 100 level, this is the main level that most people that are coming through here will be familiar with. All kinds of stuff on display from the different title sponsors of the injectors of Toyota. We've got Danny Hemlin's car over here celebrating the victory with all the confetti on it. Some of the newer Toyota cars on display just in case you want to buy one. This is the 2016 car that Danny Hemlin won at the track. The most recent car is down in the Daytona Museum which is worthwhile for you guys to go through. We did that in a prior video. We'll see if we can try to link that up above. Off in the distance, you can see the sign that says Crossover Gate to the Fan Zone. We've done a lot of videos at the track before and a lot of videos in the Fan Zone. If you're coming to any NASCAR race at the track, that Fan Zone is well worth the upcharge money. You get a wristband. They have some driver meet and greet sometimes, some Q&As, some concert, pre-race concerts. You can sign the start finish line. You can go in the garage area and get autographs from the drivers, see them working on the cars, sometimes do tours of the garages. There's the Hamlin car again. Get a better look at those multicolored seats. Get some cars going by. Racing. We're back down on the main level, 100 area. Got the Budweiser bar, and I believe Bud Light is on the other side. These are just awesome, wide open areas that if you buy any ticket, you can just come over here and chill and have a couple of cocktails in the shade. Back before they did the renovations, and you had this roof here now. It was pretty killer when you came here in the summer. It was raining outside and you just get rained on all the time here. We're back at the start finish line. And there's the Bud Light bar that I was talking about. The start finish line, you'll see, goes from where the patio is here, down through the seats. And here's a tower where they'll raise the flag. 
Checker flag, green flag, yellow flag, red flag, all kinds of flags. Here comes some cars again. And we'll be heading back up top here in a moment. With the classic signage. If you come to Daytona, you're gonna to wanna to download the app. I never promote apps, but that app has some giveaways and it has key information for the races when you come. By the way, the one thing there is not a lot of here that we're gonna talk about later is parking. Even though you see these parking spaces here, they're not here during race weeks or most times. All right, we're gonna go back into the Rolex Club. We're gonna rejoin the masses, get some free food. We get to watch some of this race. Got some free food courtesy of Daytona. Look, right above the start finish line at the Rolex 24. It doesn't get much better than this. So I was peeping in Next Terra Energy Suite here. You can see what it looks like through the little glass. Not too shabby. As it happens, I went to the men's room, and while I was in the men's room, I ran into somebody that was working on the agreement, I have worked on the agreement with Rockville to rent out the track, and it's a track rental to host work on the Rockville this year, and he said that the show should take place inside where the Rolex races, which is right here. So his understanding is that they would either have like the two main stages within this one grass area facing back to each other, and like a side stage over there, or the main stage over there, but that nothing would be necessarily in the front section here. So it is going to be very much out in the open. All right, Daytona, we're going to get out of here. I'm apologizing in advance because I don't know how the sound is, but it may be windy and I don't have a wind thing on there. But uh, Daytona, this was awesome. Free event. Yeah. It wasn't just great. free for us. This isn't sponsored or hosted or anything like that. They didn't pay us to come out everybody. here or anything. We came out here because I genuinely love Daytona International Speedway. This is one of my favorite places in the world. Not to be completely grim or here or anything, but this is one of the places that I've said, like, when I die, like, I want some of my ashes spread on this track, but this is my happy place. I'm very excited to get back to the track again next year for Rolex. We'll be out here for, hopefully, the taste of the 24. We had a little brochure about it on the way in here or the way out here. Um, and then maybe for the 500. 500 falls on a very awkward weekend for us all the time. Yeah. Um, and then Welcome to Rockville. So there'll be more details about Welcome to Rockville coming out on December 10th when the rest of the bands were announced. Because right now it's just Metallica. Um, but I anticipate that they'll probably announce the bands as well as the parking the situation and the yeah. map and camping and all of that good stuff. And now we have shadows to deal with, yeah. but no wind. <laughs> um, what we'll try to do when things get announced uh, is come back and do the tour around the track again to give you guys a little bit more insight as to um, where stages will be located and mm -hmm. uh, what bands are playing and things like that. So we normally do like a Welcome to Rockville preview video, but we'll try to get it up a little bit earlier. New venue, very tough with all of the hotels around. I know people are going crazy booking hotels thinking like you're going to roll out of bed and come right across the street to the track and it's just never the case. There's two things to think about when you come to Welcome to Rockville here, or even the races in general. The hotels, even if they're directly across the street, it's still a hike to get over here because there's only designated places that you can cross the street on International Speedway. And they have bridges now, you know, they have that one main bridge that they built. Yeah, so. and if you come to the racetrack, there are all kinds of promo companies out in the parking lot area. Mm -hmm. um, that have like giveaways and displays and, and stuff like that. But if you come to Rockville, I think you're going to need to walk through, most likely, into the infield to get to where the concert's taking place. And that adds like another mile and change to be able to get in there. There's a lot of walking when you come out to Daytona International. So It's a big place. Yeah, far more than, definitely, than was in Jacksonville for the, the Welcome to Rockville layout up there. And parking, like I said earlier, we'd come back to. It is very difficult to park at this racetrack for as much as I love coming here. The local businesses like across the street, so there's a mall across the street and there are other businesses and they'll charge you for parking, but they will absolutely rip you off as, in terms of off-site parking to be able to walk across the street. So mm -hmm. when you come out to like the Daytona 500, it's expected that you're gonna pay like 50 bucks, sometimes $75 to park across the street. It is mind-blowingly awful the way that they try to take advantage of people. There's very limited parking here. They didn't sell it 
already for Welcome on the Rockville, but if it does go on sale, I would advise everybody to buy tickets in advance. They typically have one outdoor lot that's around uh, turn four, I believe, and one outdoor lot that they may park in like turn one. Um, and that's kind of it. So there's not a lot of parking for the amount of people that come here. So just yeah. keep that in mind. And w since we've been to the races, if you are willing to walk a little further down the street past some of the shops, they do have cheaper parking in lots, different people's like areas. Yeah. You know? And by cheaper, we're not talking ten dollars. Like, no, you know, it's, it's twenty-five to thirty dollars, like minimum. Yeah. You know. So it can be expensive. So in any event, we're going to get going for now. Thank you very much for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.